Cameron smells death. He instinctively backs up right into Brian. No, 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 please don't do this. I can't, I can't. He can't finish the sentence. Brian's victims felt pain that still seems unimaginable to the coyote. Knowing Devin is close behind them, Cameron makes, at, at, makes one last effort to turn and dodge around Brian, but the bear is far too large, and he easily grabs up the coyote and throws him further into the hollow. I can't tell if this is a picture, like the, I, the perspective of this background is really hard for me to understand. There's a very similar CG and echo. It might literally be the same. I'm not sure, but I just I can't tell if we are looking from like a human height down at a small hollow in the cave that someone needs to crawl through or if this is like a very wide open space that we are seeing a like macro picture of. You know what I'm saying? I think Chase had to crawl through it. Like I think yeah. this is definitely a smaller thing. Yeah, I know I know which photo you're talking about in Echo. Like I think this is a recreation of that same one. Yeah. It's, it's, it's where just, the graves caving are. is terrifying under good circumstances. So whenever I see pictures about people who like or pictures of caves where people are like, Oh yeah, you have to just like get on your hands and knees and crawl like backwards through this cave that you can't see anything in and like maybe there's no hope of you even hitting a anything and you have to crawl backwards to get out i would lose my mind i would yeah. there is zero percent chance he would brian would kill me right here and he could carry my he could push my body through that crawl hole to get me to where he wants to bury me fuck that i'm not going in there cameron comes up immediately trying to suppress his whines and whimpers Brian, just wait a second. Think about it. I can help you. Why did you bring me here in the first place? Brian gives Cameron a dispassionate look, but he does pause, and that gives Cameron some hope and some time. Let me talk to them. Let me see if I can reason with them. We both know that this... All of this is over. Cameron senses a slight shift in Brian's intentions as the bear begins to seriously consider Cameron's reasoning. I know you need my help. I can feel them. They want you, Brian, and they're waiting for you. I know what it can be like walking in circles for most of your life making the same stupid mistakes and knowing what you need to do to get better and just never doing it. Oh yeah? But I finally did. My life was almost perfect. Until I met you. <laughs> so let's do it. <laughs> 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 great, great uh, breaking the, the tension. <laughs> Human element ruining everything. Yeah. So let's do it. Let's end this nightmare right now. Brian takes a deep breath and holds it. The entire mine, the entire town, seems to hold its breath with him. And Cameron starts to understand how deeply entwined this bear is with this place. This entity that seems to be pulling all the strings. Cameron can feel the monolithic entity shift and turn, as if to, as if it too senses an inevitable end. Brian is close to taking the coyote's offer, but it isn't meant to be, and Cameron, of course, knows that. A scuffing from the entrance announces Devon's arrival. Guess he's finally here, huh? Glad I brought my ten gauge. Always want to make sure you got good firepower when bears are involved, eh? A 10 gauge, that's pretty big. That's bigger than like a normal shotgun, isn't it? Yeah, it takes Our a while. Shotgun's 12 gauge? It takes a while to get yeah. your piercing that wide. <laughs> it's funny. He's funny. He's got jokes. He's, yeah. got, he's got good old knee slappers. Bring me to dispel your tension in horrible situations. 
I'll die first. Cameron watches in horror as the old bear opens up the shotgun before inserting a shell. Cameron's mind is blank as he automatically lunges at the huge bear, grabbing at the shotgun barrel as Brian snarls in rage. Everything's falling apart. You're spiraling. Devin shoves his bulk through the narrow passage, squeezing through the hollow on the other side. When he stumbles into the open space, Devin spots Cameron immediately, the coyote being swung left and right as he fights with Brian over the shotgun. Cameron's covered in blood, tears matting the fur on his cheeks. Oh, this is just the real... Oh, this is interesting. The transition to the to the not red version of the same one. That's especially like this. Especially looks like the CG. Yeah. The situation is already a terrible one, but again his fear for Cameron turns to anger as Brian at Brian as he sees the bear throwing vicious, crushing kicks at Cameron's lower body. Devin realizes this is it, and he has no time to think. Devin charges up behind the older bear and bites deeply into the side of Brian's neck. Apparently, biting someone other than himself is a lot more effective, and he feels his canine sink deep into the flesh beneath the thick fur. The old man is covered in a layer of protective padding, just like himself, but the older bear clearly has a lot more of it. Still, Brian screams, high-pitched and full of fury. Then Cameron's finally shaken loose from the shotgun, and Brian grabs the barrel with both paws before ramming the butt of the shotgun back into Devin's stomach. The younger bear retches and crumples over, but he manages to grab the shotgun, holding onto the stock tightly. Brian, clearly aware of how bad the situation could become for him, lets go of the shotgun so he can turn around and throw a knee up into Devin's hunched form, an inch above the navel. Almost the exact spot he'd hit earlier. Devin feels as if his guts are flattened to his spine before liquefying, the force actually lifting him off the ground for a half second. Ugh. Even though he lands on his feet, he immediately sinks to his knees, muzzle wide open as he continues to battle with his own lungs, all while still trying to hold on to the shotgun. You're a dead man walking, boy. Well... On your knees, anyway. What a surprise. Brian fumbles shakily to find the stock of the shotgun, hidden somewhere under Devin's bulk, while simultaneously trying to avoid the end of the barrel, in case Devin is able to find the trigger. The attack had been enough to rattle Brian, even if it was short-lived. Devin curses himself, trying to move, knowing he probably can't win, but he needs to do something maybe hurt Brian so bad that Cameron can at least get away. Get up. But he can't breathe. There's not so there's not much he can do to defend himself, let alone stand up. So Devin keeps his hold on the shotgun even as Brian starts trying to yank it from his weakened grasp, and he's starting to succeed. Cam, run. Devin rasps not even sure where Cameron is right now, assuming he still might be on the ground after being kicked so many times. Brian squeals. Looking up from his doubled up position, Devin seems, sees Brian in front of him, bent over as well, the, gr the grizzled bear grabbing between his legs. <laughs> Another Did nut shot in a Howley nuts? story. <laughs> Just a Right after we went for the throat again in a Howley story, there's a, a nut shot again. As Brian sinks lower, Cameron appears, lowering a foot. The coyote smiles with relief and joy at seeing Devin and seeing that he's got the shotgun. Shoot him, dude. Cameron seems so sure that they've won that he doesn't see Brian's quick recovery. The old bear forcing himself up. Murderous vengeance in his eyes as he runs at Cameron with another animalistic scream. Devin can only watch as the huge bear charges at Cameron. You can do more than watch. I can think of one thing you could do. Shoot him. <laughs> no! The much smaller coyote can only yelp in panic 
before Brian smashes into him and crushes him against the wall. Devin hears a crunching sound as he gets his first tiny sip of air. Just as he hears Cameron's own just as he hears Cameron's own air wheeze out in a yowl-like moan. And then, even more viciously than Devin had attacked Brian, the old bear begins to maul Cameron. Brian bashes him left and right with blows aimed at the coyote's face before Cameron collapses. There, Brian begins to rip and tear into the coyote with, claw with his claws. Devin begins to move, but it's slow, and he just wishes his lungs would start working. Cameron tries to crawl away from Brian, and Devin sees the horror mirrored in his boyfriend's eyes. Then Brian comes down on him again, and Cameron throws his left elbow back into the bear's face, only for Brian to sink his teeth into Cameron's forearm and elbow. Uh, and with his meth teeth? That's, mm. Those are going to be sharp. Dangerous. Then he twists and tears, and Cameron lets out a howling sound, his body twisting violently. He's on his back now, and he goes quiet, staring in shock at the wall he's, la he's layering, laying perpendicular to. His eyes begin to roll up as Brian thrashes his head, and a crunch comes from Cameron's arm. The coyote can't make any sounds now, the breath seemingly knocked out of him by the pain. Devin has never heard Cameron make these feral pain sounds. Not like this. And to see him in so much agony that he can't breathe, can't even vocalize it anymore, it gives Devin the final push he needs. He charges into Brian and, force, and the force knocks the old bear off the coyote. Devin has never seriously mauled someone in his entire life, but it's something that Only comes casually. naturally to him and Brian. <laughs> He's only, he's, only, he's only lightly mauled someone, never seriously, just, just, it's a joke. But it's something that comes naturally to him and Brian. And while he had play mauled people in the past, you were not wrong, including Cameron, <laughs> this is the first time he brings his claws, teeth, and muscles to full use. Straddling the, the older bear, Devin roars as Brian, roars at Brian before lunging down. First he bites Brian's neck again but from the front this time, while his paws rip and tear into the bigger bear's hide. Brian seems to concentrate for a second before burying his fist up into Devin's stomach, but the younger bear is tensed up this time, and the fist gets no further than his stomach muscles. Still, Brian's power is almost supernatural, and Devin lurches and grunts, folding over, an ache forming deep in the pit of his belly, but it only makes him bite harder. Devin can feel that he's truly stunned the old bear, at least for now, and as Brian takes his fist back, he resorts to a panic shoves instead of actually trying to fight. When Brian finally does try to claw at Devin's face and eyes, the younger bear leans back and smashes his head into Brian's muzzle. The sound it makes indicates a broken snout, and Brian lets out another high-pitched whine before screaming and trying to lunge up to bite Devin's neck. Devin leans back, just avoiding the teeth before smashing his head a second time into Brian's face. Then, as Brian lays dazed, Devin lays into his snout three times, full force, trying to pound every bit of agony into Brian that the old bear had given all of them. That would be impossible, though. Still, Devin feels a savage satisfaction as he sees at least two of the old bear's yellow teeth roll out of his muzzle. Brian howls and rolls violently, finally dislodging the slightly smaller bear. Devin heaves for breath, watching as Brian comes up several feet away, crouching and also heaving for breath. You fucking... you... Brian can barely form words, but not just because he's out of breath. His bitter hatred is evident. So mad that only frothy spit flies from his lips as he sputters. But then Brian's eyes flick to the right, and Devin remembers all at once that he'd left the gun there, having been focused on helping Cameron. The older bear moves lightning fast once again, and shoots off to the right, and Devin realizes Cameron is there too. Cameron, look out! 
Cameron is laying in agony after Brian's vicious attack. Knows something is deeply wrong with his body. The crushing, the crushing against the wall of the chamber had done it. The true pain, though, emanates from his left arm, and Cameron knows that it's mangled, broken, and useless. But he can still use his legs, and Cameron forces himself to get up and starts moving for the shotgun, hearing the snarls and growls of the bears behind him. That's where he was in the meantime. Yeah. He does his best to stay quiet, but stifles grunts and small squeaks. But stifled grunts and small squeaks force their way out of his throat. So he's able to stand still. I thought he, I thought I was worried he broke his spine. I think he probably broke his ribs. That's like the least threatening thing that can happen, basically, at least. Structure. Well, I mean, like, if it pierces a lot, if it punctures a lung, though, that's pretty bad. So. Yeah. It's just, it's just that for, mo for most of the time, broken ribs are just incredibly inconvenient. Yeah. But he yes. also has some sort of pain in his kidney, internal yeah. bleeding. And internal no, bleeding's all... really dangerous. Let's so. all go to the <laughs> hospital. Let's yeah. all go to the hospital. <laughs> Is Duke like, gonna just be the Uber driver for yeah, this game? Like, that's, the, that's, that's his, his role. whole... His whole Ironically, role is just to drive disabling people. disabling the vehicle, the dick. <laughs> Pausing this again. Let's all go to the hospital to get an MRI. As soon as he touches the shotgun, though, he hears Devin shout. Cameron, look! And again, the nightmare that is Brian is tearing at his body, pinning him to the wall. And Cameron screams in terror as the huge bear starts trying to bite at his neck. The panicked coyote is only just able to get his unbroken arm up. It's maybe only three seconds before Devin is there, but it feels like an eternity. Cameron, Cameron considering how badly it might, it might feel to die from having his throat ripped out. Cameron's right arm is torn up as well, but since Brian isn't shaking his head this time, his bones at least remain intact. Then, Devin wrenches the bigger bear off of him. I really wish Devon had found just a single weapon. Yeah. Imagine the kind of damage he could do with, like, just like a knife. <laughs> like, yeah. you got one good stab into Brian that isn't just with teeth. If some kind of pickaxe was around and either of them was behind him, it would just go through him. Oh, yeah. Like, it just, like, please, somewhere, something. I mean, imagine if he just went to Brian's. I guess he. Imagine if he just, like, looked through the car. There's got to be a handgun or something, right? Because Brian had one. He had a handgun somewhere, yeah. Yeah. Cameron tries to get up, to crawl, but it's useless. His body too beaten and broken to do anything other than dragging himself away. Then he hears Brian's... I say other than drag himself away. Sorry, that didn't mean to just grammar correct that. It just <laughs> stuck out to me for a second. Then he hears Brian's high-pitched squealing again. And this time it's genuinely terrified. Cameron looks over, and sees the old bear is now on his back, with his arms in a sort of hold by Devin. Devin is laying on his back, Brian's arms pulled towards his chest. Devin's hips close, uh, Devin's hips close to the old, older bear's shoulders as his legs lock together at the ankles. Devin grunts and heaves with all his might, his huge powerful body arcing towards the ceiling. Arching, I guess. Yeah, he's gonna break his arm like real bad. He's gonna pop his his elbow. Ugh. Devin is intent on really hurting Brian this time, wanting to make sure he pays the old man back for Cameron's tooth and arm. So with the t with the tooth part avenged, Devin focuses on destroying the other bear's arm. Bear bones are especially hard to break. Devon has never had a broken bone in his life. But the younger bear knows a thing or two about applying force. His dad watched MMA all the time, and while he knows little about fighting, he knows why arm bars can be so devastating. Orc. They set but, this up. But even as he leans back, bending the bear's arm over his inner thigh, only a few cracks are heard, but it's nothing serious. Devin needs the arm to have less resistance and more distance from the fulcrum. Unlocking his legs, he takes a second to slam his foot right into the older bear's jaw, 
For just a second, Brian goes limp, and Devin relocks his ankles before lifting the limp arm away from his chest and curling up. Then he heaves back on the arm again, arching hard while he twists his body. Torque! <laughs> now you're thinking like an engineer. With all the energy of yelling your anime attack at somebody. <laughs> as the catchphrase of one of... As the catchphrase of one of Devin's old professors comes to his mind, a crack splits the air, and Brian's scream somehow reach a new, panicked pitch. Devin looks over to see Cameron, has dragged himself a few feet away, leaving a dark, horrible blood trail smeared behind him. Devin stumbles over to him, hovering his paws over the coyote's neck. Baby, your, le your neck, let me see it. He, he didn't get me. Let's go. Cameron is in no shape to run, so he groans as Devin lifts him into his arms, the bear starting to stumble towards the exit. Devin looks down at the coyote in his arms, just now seeing how truly terrible Cameron's injuries are. Need to get you out of here. Shit, what? Ugh. In the frantic chaos of fighting off Brian and making sure his boyfriend wasn't bleeding out, Devin had forgotten something. The butt of the shotgun, powered by the old bear's huge body, reminds him of a harsh, sickening ache that spreads in a wave throughout his body. I'm, just, I'm losing my mind at them not grabbing the shotgun and just shooting yeah. Brian while he's down. Oh, I'm, I'm losing my mind over the fact that Devin could have just killed Brian if he wanted to. Like, after he broke his arm, he probably could have broken his neck. And he just didn't. I don't know, maybe I'm bloodthirsty? Am I too bloodthirsty? Is <laughs> After that, just several was rounds that moment of, of silence just being terrified of me for a second? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I just I'm I mean I'm literally thinking like if you're breaking Brian's arm, that buys you a few seconds to grab the shotgun and shoot him in the head. Like that yeah. has to happen immediately. Yeah. Like I'm sorry, Toaster. But I mean like if you're bleeding out in the corner, I'm not I'm finishing this first. <laughs> no, please. Other, he's just he's still there. He's just No, yeah. It's, it's like, like I'm Jesus full Christ. I'm full team like Batman should just ice the Joker. Like you deal <laughs> you deal with the problem at hand and then work on solutions, right? God you then it. work on triage after that. So yeah, no, Devin should kill Brian and also if I was in this situation like i would be moved like i wouldn't be huddled in the corner i would be leaving the second you got him into an arm bar bro it's all you <laughs> good thank you kill him for me i'm, I'm just like walk into the hospital it's just the struggle of just like i'm just like there's a there's a there's a gun in play you have not killed or knocked out the guy and you're going to escape through a labyrinth in the dark yeah while carrying someone zero and he's chance. still there with a shotgun behind you i'm just like this is it is you are just you are not ready to check on dev on cameron it's not a possibility yet it's just you can't no you can't, and i would can't. fully i would fully take the risk that you know uh brian would haunt me for the rest of my life anytime i got stoned because like cool that has a solution too you just don't get baked <laughs> So like, great, we have solved a ton of problems here today. I'm glad that we've all worked to synergize as a team. Let's pack it up and get out of here. Cameron hears the dull thud followed by the vibration through Devin's thick body. He feels the bear cringe as he sinks to his knees, huddled over Cameron. Is this, is this, is this, uh... Duke's time to shine. This should be Duke's time to shine, but also, this is like a. I I don't want to point this out because it will ruin the tension. But that is a extraordinarily cartoony shotgun. It's very Looney Tunes, and it's very funny to me. <laughs> well, you put you did. <laughs> it's just I can't help it. He looks like he's like a little Elmer Fudd shotgun right there. <laughs> he is running out of teeth. Is one of his teeth on his tongue? Kind of sloshing uh, around in there. I don't know. I'm not Can't sure. He's a he's a mess. The huge bear lifts up the shotgun he'd managed to keep a hold of. 
He struggles to hold it up with only his left paw, and his injured right arm dangles where he practically swings it up to prop his right elbow against the wall. A few pops coming from his shoulder as he does. He screams again when that happens, but with his fully functional wrist, he can now take steady aim. And with how narrow the, ho the hollow is, there's nowhere to go. Don't. Don't you fucking move, you got that? This is over. I'm killing that yote in front of you, and then I'm ripping your fucking arm off, boy. I don't think that's a good incentive to stop moving. Tell us your plan, please. <laughs> I just feel like the we shooting... We can wait getting, for two more episodes. You, you just made getting <laughs> shot sound like the best option. Yeah. Brian's expression's an odd mixture of excitement and disgust. Pity you ain't half as cute as the pup. Well, Bri well, Devin's looking way better. <laughs> he took way less damage in this this whole thing. Devin can only wheeze in response, and Cameron holds onto him tightly as he's cradled in his arms. God, you fucking ruined it. He was perfectly fine till you showed up. Now he's fucking fucked up to the point where he's not even fuckable. Cameron's ability to see and feel things is fading, just as the effects of the shrooms are fading. Still, there's just a bit left, and Cameron tries his best to use it. Devin's body begins trembling, and Cameron holds on to him more tightly. Devin's voice, still breathless, whispers into Cameron's ear. Honey, whatever happens, just play dead, okay? No matter what. But Cameron suddenly turns. Hmm? Jeez. Devin watches as Cameron's face becomes a bouquet of red ribbons, and the bear stumbles as the shot hits his arm as well. Cameron's body jerks violently, as his, in his arms before going incredibly still. Devin quickly looks down to see Cameron no longer with a face. Uh. This keeps going way worse than I expected. Just, yeah. Uh. Everything that used to make up his face is splattered against the walls, and it still pours from... Cameron's gone. In shock, Devin looks at his arm and sees the white of bone shards, at first thinking it's his own. But then he sees a few of Cameron's sharp teeth are also embedded into his arm. Devin leans over Cameron's body, an expression of untold anguish on his face as he starts to let a, a low, terrible groan that rises in pitch to a bearish howl. After looking forward, Cameron does the only thing he can think of. No! Cameron grabs the barrel and shoves up. Hmm. That was a fit. That was quite the fake out. <laughs> Jesus. <Yeah. laughs> this is a Dr. Manhattan alternate timeline moment. His hand's gone, isn't it? I mean, it would it would burn his hand pretty bad. It looked like he was covering the barrel when he pushed it. Yeah, maybe. The sound is so loud it instantly deafens Cameron. And though the ringing starts to subside, the hearing in his right ear doesn't come back. Cameron! Probably blew his eardrum. Cameron? I'm fine, I'm fine. Cameron looks to where Brian is. The kickback from the 10 gauge had hit him hard, squarely in the chest. Cameron can almost visualize the shock sent through that old, worn-out heart, already exhausted from the stimulant and the fight. The old bear, still on unsteady feet, stumbles back a bit more before hitting the wall and sliding down it to sit. Brian sits, propped up against it, looking confused. He clutches his chest, rubbing it and grimacing. Ah, 
they set this up too, where he mentioned he was like, hopefully I don't have a heart attack from my from my stimulants. Yeah. And that ends up being like every single time someone goes like, hope I don't die this way, it has <laughs> happened to them. <laughs> uh. The shotgun is on the ground, out of Brian's reach, and the old bear makes no move to get it. Fuck. It starts to try and get back up, but falls back down. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Brian clutches at his chest and stomach and groans. Oh, no. That was it? Is this it? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the... Brian slumps back, his body convulsing. Then he thrashes about, as if trying to escape something. He knocks over and smashes the electric lantern, crushing it under his weight. For several more seconds, they both listen to Brian's groaning, rasping, and snorting, before it's silent. It's quiet for a little while longer. Cameron and Devin not daring to move. Brian had seemed invincible for so long. Cameron can't get him to himself to believe that it might be so that it might be over. Cameron whispers Devin the Devin whispers into Cameron's ear. Cameron, how do you feel? Cameron gives Devin a look that's a mix, mix of love and exasperation even if Devin can't see it right now. They both know he's badly fucked up. I think something ruptured. It feels all wrong. Cameron places his right paw on his own torso, wincing. Don't move, okay? I'll get us out. I'll get us out in no time. Devin starts to tentatively make his way forward. And just as Cameron is realizing how long this might actually take, possibly too long if there's internal bleeding, his vision flickers. Hmm. Cameron stares at it, then looks at Devon wincing at the bear's bloodied and bruised face. But Devin doesn't react to the light, like Cameron is the only one seeing it. This music is so good. Yeah, it's good. I like it. <laughs> it kind of surprised me. Oopsie. But a shroom trip can't emit light, no matter how hard you're tripping. I think I can see where to go. Just walk straight. How? Cameron starts to shake his head, then stops as his neck sends a pang of fiery pain down his back. I don't know, but I can see. Let's just get us out of here, please. Cameron tries hard not to look at Brian's crumpled form against the side wall of the hollow, his wide open eyes glinting from the gentle glow. Okay. Just tell me where, okay? And sure enough, as they leave, arch after arch appears, and Cameron is confident they'll lead to the exit. These arches had tortured his mother, but this feels like his mother, somehow. It's like she was collecting them for him. Aww. As they move, they both hear rustling sounds far behind them in the mines. But Brian is definitely dead, or at least had been when they left. So they keep moving, trying to keep quiet. Then, within an hour, real light. Daylight. Devin looks down at Cameron and winces, just like Cameron did when he saw Devin's face. God. Honey, we're gonna get you help, and you're gonna get better, okay? But what about you? Do you feel okay? Cameron's voice is weaker than it had than it was earlier, and Cameron feels Devin quicken his pace. I'm fine. 
Devin says it sternly, setting his jaw, and Cameron stays quiet. Cameron, I'm sorry. And that's the last time you're saying that to me, okay? I don't blame you for anything. I'm just so glad I met you. He listens to the bear's heartbeat, steady for most of the journey, but getting faster as they get closer to the exit. I think I hear a helicopter? Maybe a megaphone? Shit. Did people come for us? The shotgun blew out my hearing, so I'm... I'm, I'm not really sure. Aww. This is Howley's kink. He wants to be carried <laughs> away by a large man in, in just jeans while he's bleeding. Just a, a through line in his game. <laughs> Cameron, Cameron and them get outside and he's like, Just one moment. I have to pee. <laughs> no! <laughs> this trip is mostly over, yet these visions are so vivid. Cameron stares at this new arch, and something about it feels different. Oh, Mom. I found it. Huh? Her arch. You're seeing arches? You know how something can happen that's so impactful, it splits your life in two. Like you see life as before and after that moment. It can be good or bad. Devin hesitates, like he wants an answer to the question he just asked. But he lets it go for now. Of course. I think meeting you is the good divide in my life. I think what happened here, and what's going to happen after, I think it's the bad divide. It had always been his mother's death, and it still is. A divide. But this time Cameron realizes he's been deeply affected mentally, as not something he can just recover from. Something's truly wrong with him. That's been the case for a long time, but now, after this, something's been pushed over the edge. So, another divide. I think we're gonna be okay, Cameron. Devin, whatever happens after this, I love you and I'm so happy I met you. Come on. You didn't have to say that first part. We made it, okay? It's just... It's just a fork in the road. There's two lingering things here. I, I'm not going to interrupt to talk about them yet, but there's two things on my mind right now. Just want to say that. Cameron gasps. Oh, Devin. Artie is alive. He went to get us help, I think. I hope. What? How? I don't know, but he got shot. Alright, he got shot, but he got away. Brian was pissed. He's hurt, but I think he made it. Oh. Oh, that's... Devin's lips tremble, and his face twists up slightly as he tries not to cry. But it's out of incredible relief and happiness. Cameron doesn't tell him how bits of Artie are missing, or that he can't sense him anymore, both because of his waning powers and because Artie is too far away. But at least that's what he hopes. Cameron stares up at the arch, looking both beautiful and terrible at the same time. Raincoat Monster stands to the side as they pass, and this time, Cameron does think it's his, ho his old hallucination. Cardboard and unmoving, just like he's always been. But something about all of this, the way he's seeing things, something has changed. It's not his psychic abilities, because now it's subtle and hardly noticeable again. No, something else happened, 
and his mind feels wrong. Looking forward is no longer clear, but as Cameron uses the last of his psilocybin in his system to peer into this, their future, he becomes afraid of what he sees. So he just turns his muzzle slightly to Devon. Cameron, we are going to make it. Based on what he saw, Cameron isn't sure. Devon will stay. He was able to see that much. But should he? More than anything, they both want to stay together. But if Cameron becomes a burden to Devon, he doesn't know how he can stay. He just hopes that Devon can still forgive him after this terrible change. And he hopes he can fight it. Whatever it is. So Cameron leans his head against Devon's shoulder, smiling in a mostly happy, but in a bittersweet way. All right. All right. Now let's get the hell out of here. 